Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to High res TV. We're going to be starting off a little bit different today. Instead of the SCL, it's going to be the AVGL Collegiate Smite Championships. My name is Jim Mack, and joining me today, Agro, it's good to see you, man. Excited to be here, brother. Glad to finally get a chance to cast with you, and I'm excited to see what these teams can do in the yeah. AVGL League. Yeah, I mean, these guys have been battling out the last six or so weeks of play. They had three weeks since their semifinal matchups to really practice and mm. hone down what they want to play here, as we've seen a lot of big names for these teams. Exactly. Indiana University, Bloomington, they've got the, the former pros on their side. That's who you're probably going to recognize there. It's Sheka and it's Sops. But the big the big thing for me with that team is that Sheka isn't playing his usual role. Was in the SPL as a mid laner. Here he's the jungler for this squad and is someone who, who has played mid in the past. Jungle, I mean, you, you get you kind of get it. Like you're with them so often. You're like, this right. is where I'd want them to be. But still, it's a totally different style of team fighting. And so I'm interested to see how Shake is going to be able to perform there. Yeah, that's kind of the thing with these transitions. And even onto the opposite side for Tarrant County, Puckham, normally a full-fledged solo laner, last season swapped to the jungle for his team, this time switching to the hunter to fill the shoes of Day to Remember, who left the squad from season three. I mean, that's a big, that, those are big shoes to fill because Day, those I mean, he, he's gone on to do really great things in the SPL. And Puckham has been kind of the focus for a lot of these teams. I mean, he's played two gods pretty consistently. It's the Kernanos and it's the Izanami. Is he going to get those in this matchup? Because if I'm, you know, if I'm Indiana University Bloomington, I might be looking to take those away, take him off of those comfort picks. Yeah, that's kind of the thing with these players is you kind of want to take them what they're comfortable with, take it off the board. If Puckham's only playing these Izanamis and these Kernos, which is what he played almost exclusively throughout the championship stages, throughout the gauntlet, the round robin, if he can get that god, he's going to prioritize it very early on. Tarrant County knows that they need him to be on a comfort hunter, so... For Indiana University, if they can take those hunters away from them or even take one and pick one away from them, that's going to be the key for them. Well, keep in mind, I mean, as you were telling me just before we went live, Puckham had a pretty good pocket pick last year during the finals. So maybe during this three-week stretch between the semifinals and now, he's put something into that god pool, whether it's something simple, you know, just a, a Jingwei, a Hachiman, something along those lines that he can be comfortable with. Or maybe we'll see him pull out something strange, like a like a Habwa ADC or a Vulcan uh, ADC. Uh, hey, I'm always down. That's the, that's the kind of stuff I'm, I like to see. Look, that's that's fun for me. I'm down too, but I don't see Puckham going anything that crazy. I mean, last time it was the Awilis jungle that he brought out where most of the season he was playing the Susano, the Ratatosker, the ones who were real strong at that time. And then he brought out the Robin game one last time. Mm. Didn't work out too well. That was right before the big rise of Robin jungle. And then he decided, I'm just going to play a wheelish and end up being one of the harder carries for his team. This time around, we're going to see if it's the same story for him. Like we mentioned, the Kern and those, the Izanami, those are the two that we all know now we need to see if he's got something else. Well, the good news for Puckham is that there are a lot of good ADCs right now. I mean, you could pick something like on her, you could do well there. You could Jingwei, Hachiman, Kernanos. I mean, all these gods are very, very viable right now. And we haven't even talked about the one that gets prioritized more than any, and that's Hu Yi. So as long as you've got Hu Yi in your god pool, you're usually going to be doing okay. If Puckham hasn't been going to that during the regular season, that has to be a pick that he's mastered by now because it's being heavily prioritized by every team on every console, you know, whether it's PC or Xbox, whether whether it's EU or NA, everyone is looking at Hu Yi right now. I mean, he's also going against Sops, though. And Sops has just about every single god in his arsenal for the Hunter role, and probably even more than that. So that's the the one-on-one -on -one matchup we're going to be looking at, because we've seen Hunters have been left alone a lot this season. They've done yeah. the 1v1, and the last time these teams faced off, Sops never really won or lost to Puck and be kept an even. When I asked him, I said... What was the whole thing with that? You know, you just kind of left him there. He's like, if I traded even, I was fine with that one. Just keeping Puckham at bay was really all that they cared about in that game. I mean, a lot of hunters kind of will play that lane a little bit more passive and look for the team fighting stage. And that's kind of what Sops did during his time in the SPL. He wasn't an aggressive hunter in lane. He was trying to out-team fight you come the later stages, which is usually more valuable for your hunter to be that style anyways. I mean, look at what Barracuda's done in his time in the SPL. It's super passive in lane, and I only say that because it bothers him. But then his team fight is excellent. <laughs> That's exactly what these hunters need to do. And Sops has had the track record of doing that on a very, very high level. I'm just curious to see if Puckham's going to be able to match it. Yeah, and I mean, Tarrant County has always kind of been that more passive early. And both these teams really are kind of this passive early game. You know, they're going to prioritize the farm. They'll go try and get that first couple of kills early on. But just like last season, Data Remember was the farm for 15 minutes and then come back and carry the game. We'll see if Puckham's going to elect to go the same route for these teams. But 
We talked a lot about Puckham and Sops and Shaka. There are quite a lot of other names on this team. Osap, the big one for Tarrant County, returning for his fourth straight championships. I mean, he, to, to be in this many championships, you got to be doing something right. And, and, this and, guy, and this guy has done so well at stealing away objectives. Everyone's got to be worried about where he is when they're pulling the Gold Fury, pulling the Fire Giant, pulling Portal Demon. And that's a really big asset to have. I mean, you look at classic solo laners that have done great at that. I think of Dimmy out of energy. I mean, mm -hmm. he was great at stealing away objectives, and it really was a boost to that squad. I mean, in the last matchup that they had and during the round robin before semis, when these two teams faced off, Osoth stopped three fire giants alone as Chalk. All he had to do was walk up, and he could stop it. In fact, one of them ended up leading to a delayed deicide at the attempt for it. That's crazy, and Chalk is so good at that because he's so hard to peel away. I mean, he can he can kind of be annoying and doesn't do a whole lot in the team fighting stage, but he's also really, really hard to kill. So just being there in front of the objective, being there at the right spot at the right time is more than enough for your team. And with Indiana having first pick, that's going to give them a lot of big options available if they want to prioritize one of Sheikah's junglers. That's a big thing. He's been prioritizing a lot of warrior and kind of tankier assassin jungles more than anything else. Usually the Osiris's has kind of been his go-to, the Raven as well. Banning Raijin out, that's just a shot at wide try. That was one of his premier gods back in season two. I love it because Raijin gives you that early pressure against those warriors in the jungle. It gives you some safety against them as well. Now, Raven's got a pretty good matchup against him because it's easy to force away that Thunder Crash and then Mystic Rush after him. But if, if that isn't going to be the pick for Indiana University, I really like this Raijin selection. And with Trent knowing that, they immediately ban away that Robin. Yeah, they're going to try and take a little bit away from Sheikah, though one of his big gods that he do still does like to play in the jungle is the Osiris. But more than anything, Outlaw, one of his favorite gods, if it's left open, he's going to grab it, Thoth. I love this early first pick. Now, it does worry me a little bit for Indiana that they don't have a lot of pressure in the early game, but there's not a lot of pressure quite yet on the other side either, well, at least till they lock in that Osiris. Well, this is a shot at Sheikah, but at the same time, Osath and Glavis both do like playing this guy in the jungle. Glavis does have a little bit more assassin pool than Sheka does. And Geb, I, you know, you and I kind of talked about it in the off time. Geb is one of the top priority picks between these two supports, between Ratcheteer and Sabbath. These guys will fight. I, I'm pretty sure we saw them. If we could see them over onto the side, they'd be punching each other like, no, Geb's mine. I won Geb, and there's going to be the Ratatosker there for Sheka, most likely in the jungle. Could be built that tanky style. We've seen Captain Twig have a lot of success with it. We've seen basically every jungler adopt that tanky rat style, and that can fit that it can fit really well. Plus, it works well in conjunction with the Thoth. It sets up for him in the late game because rat's late game damage, not great, but his setup is still fine. But it can carry him with the pressure through the early stages. Well, Ganesh going to be locked in. Not too surprising. Ganesh has been one of those powerhouse supports to pick up. For Sabbath, I would have thought maybe the Athena would have been the go-to, try and go against that Geb. We know the matchup between Geb and Athena. It's a telltale time since season one yeah. of these two gods. But Soul being locked in, no surprise for wide try. If Raijin's gone, this is usually what he defaults back to. And it's a very safe pick. It can do well against the Ratatosker who wants to chase him down. As long as you can kind of preemptively start your disapparate, you may be able to get yourself out of danger. So it's a really strong pick here for wide try in the mid lane. Not only that, none of the hunters have been picked up here. And now that we're coming into the ban phase, this might be the priority to try and go out against Puckham, see what else he's got under his pool. Let's see what Indiana likes to ban this time around. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say is that the sole prioritization means that Puckham Puckham might not get his Kernanos or his Izanami, the two favorite picks that he likes to go to. But it said it's going to be the Hu Yi ban by the Trailblazers. And that's more of a shot at Sops, of course. If Hu Yi isn't being prioritized on for Puckham, Sops you know is going to be able to play it. And you know it's a very strong. The Nemesis right is a good shot at Glavis there. He did get a couple of chances to play that during the semifinals. And I guess Indiana just don't want to see what he can do on this god, especially since they might be looking towards a little bit tankier lineup. We've seen the Rat Tank kind of be the priority as of Super Regionals. Everybody's kind of been playing the Circuit and the Ratatoska with more tanky builds. And that can work out really well because you're relying on your base damage in the earlier stages instead of your scaling, which isn't really that good on those characters anyways. And the Bologna ban here, so just trying to keep that solo lane of pressure in the Trailblazers' favor. Wow, that's a that's a 100% respect ban towards Glavis. Back when he was playing in even Smite Central, Smite Prime, some of the lower levels, and when he made it into CC, if everything was all said and done, he just went to Susano. So that's a lot of research, a lot of homework done against this player. I, I like that. Just keep, try and keep him off his comfort picks at land. But that means that Puckham gets one of his. But it's going to be the Izanami. This is instant pressure in the duo lane for the Trailblazers. It's going to help out because usually you kind of are leaving these hunters alone. Or they could be moving Izanami to the mid. We have seen that transition recent where you put the hunter in there and you leave the support alone. But 
You have not the best support to leave alone against a Ganesh if they go with that route. No, and I really, in some situations, like with the AMC, which is still open here, by the way, if Sops wants to go for it, I like AMC going into the mid lane to provide your mid laner pressure, and that would be a great pick here for Indiana University because of how little pressure that Thoth has in the mid lane. Taking up shock. Now, I'm not even sure if that's going to be going towards Wolf King or Shaka in this instant. Well, probably more towards Wolf King for that one with the Ratatoskr locked in, but there is still a McUni. I mean, Ratatoskr solo is still Good a thing, thing. and Artemis. Interesting. Trying to, that, there must be some some sort of matchup there up against the Izanami that Sops likes. I mean, Artemis has that kill potential. Anytime anyone steps to her, you can pop that Caledonian boar and, and turn that around very, very quickly. Plus, Izanami's dash, even though it's quicker than it used to be, probably not quick enough to get out of range of Tusky if Sops wants to go aggressive. So trying to get that solo kill in lane, not a bad idea. Kabraken with the lock-in. Again, not sure which of these two gods is going to be going on to who here. Yeah. Osoth, back in Season 1, ended up winning the championships with his team on the Kabraken solo, so it's possible for it. But at the same time, I mean, Glavis has a lot of gods in his arsenal, whether it's the Assassins, the Warriors, Guardians. This is a lot of ambiguity from kind of both of these teams. I love the Kabraken pick here. If, I, if I'm the Trailblazers, I'm putting that in the jungle for Glavis. I mean, it does so well against the Artemis, who can't get out of the who can't get mm -hmm. out of the walls. Thoth can't get out of the walls. Ratatoskr can't get out of the walls. Ganesh can, but Chalk is going to have some trouble as well. I love this Kabraken pick, and I think it fits better in the jungle because you want to bring that around the map. You don't want to just stick it in right. solo and not have your ability to lock down that Artemis, lock down that Thoth in the mid lane. And this is a perfect pick. Yeah, it's kind of like the somewhat safer, better late game Odin kind of pseudo yeah. cage. I mean, you don't get, you know, Odin's kind of one of those things. You get him early off, you know. You have him. He gets. The, he has the early damage. Once that late game hits, he just becomes a cage bot more than anything else. Kabraken kind of has that relevancy at all points. The early game, very powerful with the tremors, having two stuns built into his kit if he can get those off. Oh, yeah. And also, just you can't fight Kabraken in a jungle, if you, especially if you don't have any way to get away from him. He, he's got so much lockdown, and that's what Odin really lacks, is that he, his cage is much better, don't get me wrong, yeah. but more damage from Kabraken in the mid to late game and more CC. And there's plenty of CC now to set up for this soul in the mid lane for Y try for Puckham in the dual lane with Izanami. I mean, you lock someone in that cage from Kabraken and Dark Portal's not missing. And that's plenty of no. damage coming out of the Hunter roll. I really like the way that Trenton has gone for this draft. That's a lot of damage coming through with that Dark Portal. That is one of the scarier Hunter abilities, especially with how fast it goes off now. Yep. It's almost impossible to miss that ability at this point, but it's gonna be game number one, Indiana University Tarrant County College. Tarrant County looking really strong with this draft. I really like what they've gone with it. But on the other side, Indiana, I like this pick for Sheikah, the Ratatoskr. You were telling me that he likes a lot of warriors in the jungle, and this kind of does the best of both worlds. He can build it tanky like a warrior, but he can bring the pressure that an assassin will onto the back line in the early stages of the game. It, plus, like I said, it works well with the Thoth in the mid lane, trying to get him a little bit of pressure. Well, they are going to like to leave the Hunters alone. Sops and Pakum just going to be free farming themselves. And when it comes to that early game, Izanami's going to win hands down. She has those boomerang autos. She has the spectral projection to get the easy, quick clear onto it. And just kind of getting Gev into a place like with the soul is where it's better off into the mid lane. I like I like the idea for Sops to just start his red buff and try and secure it for himself before uh, Puckham can come in and really invade that very easily. But with the Geb starting in the mid lane alongside the Soul, you're never going to outclear the Ganesh and the Thoth. I mean, Thoth's early clear, not great. It really isn't. But no. Ganesh's is really, really good, better than everyone else in this mid lane, honestly. So this is a good idea by Indiana to try and put up, put their better clear in the mid lane. You can already see that it's worked out for them because they got those right side mid harpies and hit level two. Invade onto the top hand side. And this is something we've seen a lot in the AVGL has been a lot of priority towards the solo lane, trying to get them behind early on. But fighting an Osiris and a Kabraken early might not be the best idea. Wolf King getting slowed to eternity. Osoth consistently throwing those sickles. Both sprints pop to try and get Wolf King out. He will be able to use that torrent. But now Shake is caught in the middle of three of them. Osath might be able to pick this up still. I should have a slow available soon, but not mm. enough. Wolf King going to be able to survive and should have enough sustain to not have to back to base quite yet. They're going to try and make sure that they can keep that blue buff possibly open for an invade, if that's anything. So trying to send Wolf King back to base, but it is a chalk. He does have sustain his kid. He's not going to have it quite at level two, but at level three, he will be able to get that rain dance, get a little bit of healing back for himself. Plus, he's got the health chalice and the health potions. He's not worried about any mana because of the, because of the chalk passive giving you free abilities after you hit five auto attacks. So that's a good idea by Wolf King and may have just kind of been looking forward, really realizing that an invade was certainly a possibility.
Well, with these two teams, we've kind of seen a history of they game number one of big sets, even in a best of three set that they played throughout the season. You kind of just let them see what they want to do game one, see how it worked, and then that's when we start seeing the more targeted bans. Now, obviously, in second ban phase, we saw the Susano and the Nemesis taken away from Glavis, but at this point in time, it's so hard to ban out the jungle. Exactly. There's so many things that can work out for you well. I mean, Kabraken was a top pick at Super Regionals just a week ago, and, and that gets picked last year for Glavis in the jungle. Jungle and really, like I said, just fits this draft very, very well. Now, the draft on the other side for Indiana is has a really interesting balance of early game and late game. I'm a little bit worried about their mid game, however. I mean, late game, you've got Thoth and Artemis, two of the best gods in their respective roles, and I'm not worried about that. Early game, you've got Chalk Ratatoskr, two of the best early game gods in their roles. But the mid game might be a little bit lacking compared to the Izanami, Soul, and Kabraken that Tarrant County have on the other side. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult getting into that transitional stage for them. For now, it's just going to be a lot of farming coming through. Like we mentioned, these two teams really just like to sit and farm for 15 minutes. They'll go for a couple of quick kills. If possible, you saw it early on. You know, you try and evade my buff, I try and take your life. But... More than anything, it's just going to be a lot of farming for these teams. And if the, if that's the the kind of mini meta that's developed between these two teams, I would have preferred to see Outlaw go for something like a Warlock Sash start instead of the Book of Thoth. If it's going to be a lot, if it's going to be a lot of farming in the early stages, getting those stacks up early because you're gonna you're gonna be not as strong fighting with that Warlock Sash at the beginning. But by the time you get your boots done and have your 100 stacks, then you're really swinging and you're much safer. So going for the Book of Thoth start is a little bit more power oriented, but much less safe than the Warlock Sash. Yeah, especially when you have a Ganesh to kind of help you with that early clear. You know, yeah. the, pass the passive of Ganesh, he can't get minion kills if you're near. It's not just actual god kills, it's minions too. So because Ganesh has such a great early clear and early game for him, I w I'm with you. I would have much preferred the Warlock Sash. Plus, I mean, that way your support isn't taking your stacks. So yeah. every, everyone has that experience where you're spamming, I'm building stacks. Ganesh is going to help you clear and not take your stacks away, which really makes it that much easier. Now, that's still, you know, that still helps out with the Book of Thoth, but it's not nearly as impactful. No, and it's also not nearly as important. You know, you don't get as much power off of a Book of Thoth being stacked as you do a Warlock Sash. It's an immense amount of power and HP that you get for stacking that item up. Survivability is the, is the real reason that we see mid laners starting to favor that Warlock Sash a little bit more now. Plus, the, the, the slower starts in the early game, as you mentioned, that not only on this in this sort of format where it's the AVGL, but also in, in, the, in the SPL, it's been a little bit slower in the mid lane, and that's why we've seen a lot of European mid laners specifically start to pick up that Warlock Sash as a beginning so that they can stay safer whenever the fights actually do start happening in the mid to late game. Well... Four minutes. The only action that we've seen was at the invade of the sploot of the blue buff. You can see they're actually taking away Oatsot's blue buff from him this time. But he is an Osiris. He doesn't really need the blue buff as much. He does have Death's Toll to be able to keep himself up. He's not too worried about it. And in, 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 but the problem is that you're losing XP and gold for giving up that buff on the right hand side, and that's better for Sheka to be able to take that away from Osath and give it to Wolf King. You want your Chalk to get an early lead and be impactful. And with Glavis over here on the left side of the map, there was no chance for Osath to try and defend it. Glavis going to be able to get that. Sops didn't turn the corner and see him. Going to use that boar early on. Glavis stuck inside. Going to have to try and get away from the Darmic Pillars. Supernova pop, but Ooh. Outlaw from the back. First blood for Indiana. And Glavis just in the wrong spot there. The shell not working out for him. Needed something like a beads up against that Artemis, or maybe could have just saved his one. Believe he used it to try and poke out Sops, or maybe even clear the purple buff, but your one makes you root immune. That trap wouldn't have worked from Sops if, if, if that one first ability was up from Glavis instead. He gets trapped in the, in the trap and just pulled apart by yep. Sops and Outlaw. I believe he did end up using it at the purple buff to try and clear that one away, so did not have it for the ensuing fight. And with the rotation from Outlaw, when you're on the wrong side of the map, it's a lot easier for them to rotate on you than it is for your team to help you out. Exactly, and the, the, no support there whatsoever for Tarrant County's jungler. The good news for Indiana is that Puckham has had no pressure onto himself so far, and he's actually gone for the Devourer's Gauntlet's rush, whereas Sops went for the boots right away. So Sops going to be a little bit stronger at this exact point in the game, but come, you know, seven minutes, it's going to be Puckham just a minute from now who's going to be really, really impactful having started to stack up that Devo Gloves already. We're seeing it again. A lot of focus on the soul laying Ratcheteer. Not going to land that Cataclysm onto Shaka. He's going to be able to dash out of that one. Because of that, now the blue buff's open for him. 
Puckham dashes into the left-hand side, but Sop's not going to put too much pressure onto him. It's hard to miss in the early game, even with knowing that Puckham's dash is down. Plus, Sop's ultimate is on cooldown. But Ratched here, a little bit of trouble on the right-hand side. Shake is going to take to the sky and look right for the Gev. He's in trouble, and Shake is going to grab him. Glavis has to run away. Osad now staring down three members, but has that judgment. Tether is going to stun out two. Outlaw not going to connect with a final judgment. Knocked up by Sabbath. The walls come out, but it's not enough. Why try picks up one in the meantime, but Shaka still going to find Glavis. Definitely worth it for Indiana University to grab two for one. Shaka gets one and then the and then ends up falling to Why try ultimately. But Why try probably could have gotten more if he had backed by now. He's got no boots yet. He must have plenty of gold in hand, but hasn't been able to go back and spend it just now backing to base to pick up full penetration boots. Why try needs to time that back a little bit better to not have backed for the first seven minutes of the game makes you very, very weak. He probably gets a double, if not a triple, if he's got his pen boots finished in that engagement. I mean, eight level eight at this point, you can't be sitting around that long. Even with the rotations that came through, he had plenty of time to back. I guess that soul stone just keeping him up enough to be able to stay and try and farm that up. But with that back, you saw he only got full boots and he got tiny trinket. With how long he was there, you just thought he came back with two, three items at that point. Exactly. I mean, that, that's just a little bit too long to be waiting on that in that mid lane to back. It, it, we see a lot of mid laners back right after all the camps are cleared on the first rotation before they can even finish penetration boots just to get boots too to make their invader potential that much stronger, to make their mid camp contest that much stronger. Why try doesn't not only doesn't do that, but stays around so long that he can't do anything afterwards. A lot of focus on the Osa. The ultimate gonna be used from Wolf King. Jason down the sprint has been popped. Rats Deers now here with the team. Cataclysm on the Wolf King. He's gone. Why try picks up his second kill. Shaka decides not to go for the kill on the Osath because he was safe underneath that tier two tower. Instead, just escapes so close to bring in the damage necessary to bring down Osath, but that Osiris passive, that percent damage mitigation against these physical damage dealers just ends up proving too valuable, and Osath's able to escape. Shaka waiting in the wings, seeing if they're gonna do anything. Looking at this goal, Fury, but both teams are just trying to, trying to bait each other here. You can see Shaka's on the back. Oracles are gonna be started up. He's gonna get the quick beads out of wide try. That's a big win. That's a really good play there by Shaka, still hanging around because he knows he's so quick on that Ratatosker. Oracles end up getting split one for one, but the definite takeaway there is that Wydry uses purification beads, even with having Ratchet here right next to him on the Geb. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Was Ratchet was right there. He could have gotten the Geb shield going through if he wanted to. Glaive is going to go on to Outlaw. Egg is going to be popped to immune the damage through. Supernova on top. He's trapped in place because of the Tremors. Wydry Three kills in a row for him. Now Sabbath caught in the middle of four. They're trying to find him out. Darmic Pillars pop. He's not going to be able to get out. Otsa diving out that tower, but here comes Wolf King. Big ult from the chalk out of the solo lane. Wolf King trying to do it with Shaka, but now shaka has got a retreat because the good damage coming out of Wide Try. Look at what Pen Boots does for you, J-Mac. Brings a lot of damage. Oh, but now Sops is here. He's going to pop that board, but nobody's in range of it. That disapparate getting him just away from the ultimate. So now that that's down on Sops, Puckham really didn't have too much to worry about. Anyways, they're both level 11 now. That's uh, every Artemis player ever has had that happen to them. And it, and it never feels any better. It always feels bad, but a good idea from Sops on the rotation. Great recognition, though, from Tarrant County to realize that Outlaw stuns out Ratcheteer. And in order to stun with Thoth, you need to have dashed. So Glavis just runs right at him and locks him in the cage. Good patience by Y-Try. Outlaw, no purification beads. Instead, picked up the Aegis. And so he just waits out that relic, then drops the supernova on top of him. Good communication by Tarrant County and good follow-up by Y-Try. And early on, you're not going to have that cooldown to get the quick dashes off, to get them more consistently. It's going to take a little while in the early game to get those dashes online. So recognizing he just threw that out, you might have two, three seconds window between when he actually threw that out. So great play by them, baiting out the Aegis early on as well. Two aggressive, two, uh, well, one aggressive style, one slightly different style of support build. Sabbath going for the Heartward Amulet, trying to give some protection against this Cabracket in the jungle. And Indiana looks, or excuse me, Tarrant County looks like they want this Gold Fury. Outlaw and Sabbath not going to let that go. Two gods who are great at stealing away objectives. Sabbath with the Dharmic Pillars. Outlaw obviously with the final judgment. Two big ultimates that can take that Gold Fury away quick. No problem there, though, from Tarrant County to just kind of kick the tires. Just check and see if Indiana's awake. See if they're paying attention. As soon as they show up, they reset because their buffs are up on this left-hand side. And they've still got enough members here that, that, that Indiana's not going to feel comfortable doing this gold yet. Shaka just trying to bully out Ratcheteer. He's going to get the ultimate out of him. Shaka now going to dash into the back. Outlaw is going to pick up Ratcheteer. Outlaw going to dash into the back. Stuns out Osat so that way Sop can get out, who's getting very low. The walls from Glavis not going to help them out. In fact, Osat's going to drop to it because of it. Shaka. 
Picking up the kill on the wide try. Three for now. Sorry, four for one exchange. Puckham just able to dodge that stun as well, or else Outlaw might have found him as well. What a fight from Outlaw on this thought. He finishes off Ratchet here with the ultimate from a distance and takes no damage at all. No one from Tarrant no. County looks at him. Great escape by Sops to try and prolong that engagement. It was good peel from Glavis to try and make sure that he got out uh, with Osath chasing him. Indiana ended up getting the Gold Fury, and that's just great teamwork from them. I mean, it's the Outlaw staying in the back, firing off those shots, no one being able to look at him because of his positioning, Sops being able to extend the fight. This was just such a good play by all of Indiana, and it ends up play, paying pretty big dividends. Now up about 3,000 gold. And you gotta think, this was a first pick thought. They wanted Outlaw to have this god immediately, and you can see why. Now level 12, yeah. three, one, and three. La that last fight picked up, what, two kills of his own, helped to pick up two more kills. This is what Thoth can do when you put that team to help him out through that early game. Love it. I mean, it's certainly worthy of the first pick here for Outlaw. And Sheikah also did a great job in that fight, starting off the engagement by slowing down Ratcheteer. Sabbath, no hesitation on those Dharmic Pillars to lock Ratcheteer in place. And then Sheikah's able to pick up a couple kills on the back end after trusting that Outlaw was going to be able to snipe away Ratcheteer, which he did so successfully. Now Sheikah's in a really good spot. He's almost done with what's probably going to be a mystical male in that jungle. He's already got his Enkile done, and that's so good against the Cabracken because he's going to try and tremor you and then just get silenced out of it right away because of that Enkile passive. Rotation on to south, but he's not too worried about it. He does have that Gladiator Shield online, has his next physical defense item started up, might be looking towards a Mystical Male of his own, could be looking towards a big Guardian Male, which would be very good for him as well. Try and slow down what Sops can do in the later stage of the game. I wouldn't mind a Stone of Gaia here early on from Osaf either, though. A lot of knockups on the side of Indiana University. I mean, you look at the the, the knockup from the Ganesh, a knockup from Ratatosk, or a knockup from Chalk. Plus, that Stone of Gaia just works so well in tandem with Gladiator Shield because it's cheap HP, and of course, the Glad Shield heal goes off of your max HP, yeah. so can work very, very well together. And I mean, we've seen a lot of people. I, I remember watching a Super Regional match, and there was like six of them in the same game, all picked up by jungle, solo, and support. They were all just picking up this item. It's such a cost-efficient HP and HP5 item for the team, as well as the passive you get through it. The percent HP over time as well when you get knocked up, another percent HP over time. It's just a massive amount of sustain. And the best thing about it is it's just 2,000 gold for 400 yeah. HP. I mean, you could have no other stats on it, and it would still be on the table to be bought by some of these tanky solo laners, even a tanky jungler like Sheikah. Osas should definitely be picking up a Stone of Gaia. Would like to see at least one other one, probably under Ratcheteer or Glavis as well. I'd like to see a Gem of Binding coming out, or the Stone of Binding coming out from Glavis on the Osiris. One of the better Guardians in the game to be able to proc that ability, get that extra penetration, but rotation onto Puckham. Not gonna worry too much. One thing, he didn't pop the beads there. He didn't Smart. worry. Smart, I like that patience from Puckham, but now needs to be a little bit worried because he is poked out. But with Shaka being on this left-hand side, it's going to be Terran County going straight to the Portal Demon. Oh, Seth going to try and zone out Sabbath alongside Y try. But once again, rotation onto Puckham, no beads and blown up. Shake up five kills for himself. And now the Portal Demon started up once more by Terran County. They know they need to get something over here because after that kill on the left-hand side, it's just going to be a push onto that Tier 1 tower. That's gone. And with no one backing from Terran County, that's going to be a Tier 2 most likely as well. Wolf King nowhere to go. He's going to ult, knocks up three members. It's going to be big. The Dharmic Pillar zoning them out of the tower. Big play by Sabbath. Sheikah making his way back over. Still has that ultimate available. Didn't even need it to dive Puckham and just kind of trust Sops to get that tier two. I think it would have been better for uh, for Sheikah to just stay over on the left-hand side and just grab this tier two tower. Osath backing now. He's going to not have ultimate, though. I think that could have been an easy 1,500 gold for Indiana. Well, Sheikah going to rotate through the jungle. Nothing up for him to really take. There was the back harpies, but don't know if you want to try and contest those early. He is. He's going to proc the Ankyl coming out from... That's going to be it for him. Just going to go ahead and back off. And that's just using the mobility of the Ratatosker to your advantage. He's still got Purification Beads. He's still so has Ultimate. Old. Yeah, he's he's perfectly fine, even against a, a pretty decent early game damage dealer like Glavis. And you were asking for a Stone of Binding from him, and I agree that would be a good pickup. But you have to keep in mind that Ratcheteer has gone for one himself early on, and that effect does, doesn't stack. So if, if no. Ratcheteer and Glavis are on the same target, it's better for Glavis to go for a different style of build and pass up that Stone of Binding. But if Ratcheteer is going to be more focused on trying to 
peel for the back line, not necessarily engage with the gap, then I completely agree with you, and Sona Binding would be a great pickup for this Cabracken jungle. Well, Bancroft Talon going to be the item from y -Try. We Use it, we've been seeing the Book of the Dead kind of be the more common pickup for these mages who want to go for that lifesteal item. Why the Bancroft Talon? Just a little bit cheaper. Plus, uh, y -Try must not feel under too much pressure from the uh, from the Thoth and from the Ratatoskar in the early game, though I don't know if he it should be feeling that way because those two are going to be doing plenty of damage to him. I think that extra HP would have really done him well, though he probably feels like he's just falling too far behind Outlaw. I, I mean, look at how much he already has in his item build. He's already got the Book of Thoughts fully stacked up. He's got a Sphere of Desolation done, and he's already working on a Rod of Tahuti, whereas Y-Try has two items. So you're trying to get something cheaper so that he can accelerate into that penetration, which should be an Obsidian Shard, which can help him with the towers as well as the players. I think that that might be the idea here from Y-Try. Yeah, I imagine it's going to be the Obsidian Shard next one. Get that extra big penetration online. Really try and burst down some of these tankier members. And even though the solo laners haven't built that magic defense, they're still warriors. You're still a few levels behind them. It's not the easiest time for you. Exactly. And I, and I love the thorns here from Osath out of the soul lane. I, I know everyone feels like, oh, you're a warrior, no. you just get thorns, but that's really not the case. I think that a lot of times there are better team fight relics to get, but against an Artemis who's going to be critting you whether she wants to or not, love the thorns pickup. Yeah, that's the big thing is Artemis just passively will be critting you. 15% possible crit with just the passive alone and building into critical chance as well with that eight-pointed shuriken so having that thorn is going to be big ratch goes in with the three-man cataclysm knocks up two as well sops can't find a way out of the walls finally finds him but Ooh. outlaw with the final judgment helping out with shaka they're going to drop two members now for shaka chasing down into it osa over the wall but shaka was waiting for him looking for the triple kill going to be knocked up the on kill pop going to be proc osa going to get the shield but Sheikah is unrelenting. He's still going through onto it. Triple kill for Sheikah. What a fight there for Indiana to get it. It centers around this Gold Fury. Ratcheteer is on a different page than the rest of Tarrant County there. Way too early on the Blink Cataclysm. There's no possible follow-up. No one was even on that side of the wall to try and follow up for him. On the other side, perfect follow-up by Outlaw, who just trusts Ratcheteer, trusts Sheikah, I should say, to knock up Puckham. Puckham had both relics available and got zero player damage off in that fight because he got crushed right off the bat. Now, th this game is far from over, but looking into game two, I can't see them giving Indiana this thought again. Outlaw has been on point with almost every single shot that he's fired off of that final judgment. Yeah, why would you give it to him? I mean, this is a land environment. These players in the AVGL not usually as accustomed to playing on land, and so you don't want to let them get comfortable on a specific god. The problem is, Outlaw's played great, but so has Sheka. Sops has looked good. Sabbath's been in the right spot on the Ganesh. Now, I would agree with you that Thoth has been the most impact, but Sheka's right there with him. So you want to try and take away the Thoth and the Ratatoskar. It's going to be hard to do both. But it's also not out of Glavis' god pull. He does love playing the Ratatoskar as well. Could look to maybe pick it away from them if they don't opt to ban it away. Could be, and with Sheikah finishing off that Titan's Bane now, he's going to be doing a lot more damage. Still has all that protection between the Mystical Male and the Ankele. This is exactly what the, the, the type of style that he likes to play in the jungle. And he's done such a good job of being an annoyance to the enemy mages and to the enemy ADCs. Something a little different that we're not normally seeing. We have the 1v1 Hunter matchup. That's something we don't get very often. Sheka picks up Ratatier. Puckham drops the Dark Portal, but he's way too late. Sops going to get the solo kill. Why try has that disapparate, so that extra movement speed gets him out of that invaded punish stun. But with no mana, this is going to be an easy tier one tower for Indiana, who just continues to win all across the map. Wolfking's got to deal with a 2v1. But Glavis isn't doing anything to him. No, he's not getting anything. Osoth finally going to jump in there with it. The Lord of the Afterlife not going to connect. Now Wolf King throws out the axe, gets the torrent. They're going to dive the tower. They're tanking enough for it. But Wolf King is so fast, has a movement speed. Blink in from Glavis. He's gone. Wolf King finally punished. But look at what Indiana got across the map. They got a tier two tower in mid on top of that. Sops might be able to get a tier two tower in left if no one rotates quickly enough. No Titan's Bane for Sops quite yet. And instead, he's just going to let the minion wave push underneath. No. Decide he wants to try and go for it. Should be able to snag out this tier two, even with Glavis and Ratcheteer on the way. And he has a lot of attack speed to be able to try and burst that down. Not quite the penetration there yet for it. Does have the Poison Star. Now Why try being pressured again by Sheku. Four levels up on the mid laner. Three levels up on his opposition. Sheka has been insane this game on the Ratatoskar. Why try has done good damage 
damage so far. I mean, he's second from the top in player damage thus far, but he's still so far behind in his build. I mean, he's only working on the, the spell focus there for the Obsidian Shard, still really behind where Outlaw is, who has had that penetration for quite some time now. And while it's less pen overall because it's only the 20 flat, from the Sphere of Desolation, you also have to factor in that Thoth's passive, giving him another 20 flat penetration on top of that. Why try is, sti is, is still not caught up in terms of total items. His build is cheaper, too, on top of that. I mean, you go item for item across the board. Sphere of Desolation is more expensive than Bancroft's Talon. Book of Thoth, more expensive than Obsidian Shard. And Outlaw still has both of those and a restored artifact on top of that. Why try just hasn't been able to farm effectively quite yet. I'd like to see the net worth just to see how much farther ahead Outlaw is than Y Tribe, because that's a big one, is seeing this looking there. Yeah. 8,900, he's almost 2,000 gold behind right and, now. And that's a, no surprise when you look at how far apart these two are in the item builds. And th that's really been a big impact because Why Try has been impactful without the items. Imagine what he could do with them. I don't want to imagine that. That's a scary world. It could look like what Outlaw's done so far. That's a scary world right now. That That's a world I don't want to live in. Outlaw and Sheka have been dominant this entire game with it. You can see Ozeth and Wytra trying to keep it going through. Now Sabbath caught out in the middle of four. The wall's nice not going to be good because of the passive that comes with the Ganesh Dash. You can go straight through those. Got it off before the wall, but all they're going to get out of him is his sprint and his pillars. Got his pillars, got the sprint, got two ultimates in exchange. Not a bad trade for either side, really. I mean, getting that sprint on cooldown, pretty important. For what, uh, for what Indiana has done so far. But Wolf King does have one of his own, and that's something that I like with these, is they have picked up the double sprint, and even though that it's now one on cooldown, that allows them to be able to stagger the cooldowns on it. Sheka and Osath having a little bit of fun on the right-hand side. You can see Sheka laughing a little bit, and then Osath walks to him, and he's like, okay, now I gotta be serious again. I gotta, I gotta try and fight him, and Osath ends up getting his own blue buff, but that's, uh, that's a good idea from Sheka to just back up. No support coming on that right-hand side for him. Surprised I haven't heard a lot of yelling from Sheka. He is, uh, he's a character. He is, he's something else. And he's, he's been popping off a little bit. I've been watching the player cams. Haven't, <laughs> haven't heard him quite yet. No, and in fairness to him, maybe my ears are just a little damaged from the console land this weekend because those guys are so loud all the time that, uh, you know, maybe he is being loud. Just no one can match the intensity uh, of the SCL lands. Those guys are always insane. This is they're think, mean. Uh, they're, they're heartless. They, they really are. They don't care who you are, who your mama is, or anything. They'll yell at you and everyone that you love and know. And they and they love it. That's like the, that's their favorite part of this whole land. And now going on to the Gold Fury, they're just gonna bait it out, knocked up out of the final judgment. Outlaw not gonna get that off, but the boar is out. Glavis getting chunked down. Ratchet here is gonna be the second one to fall with Glavis. Big final judgment again from Outlaw in the setup from Sheka. Sops also was right there with that setup. That, I mean, another Gold Fury goes down for Indiana. That's three in total. And this gold lead nearing 15,000. This is looking rough for Tarrant County. Looking to make something off of that. Going on to Wolf King. He's getting low lore. The afterlife is going to be enough to help them get that one second kill online for Puckham. But at 16 to 7, like you said, 14,000 gold difference. That's not going to be quite enough, especially with the portal demon back up. Yeah, Wolf King is a little bit too far overextended. That's the second time he's just been a little bit too aggressive in a oh. 2v1 or in a 3v1 like that. But when your team's this far ahead, I mean, it, it, Chalk's not going to be doing anything anyways, right? Did, did you see how big that crit was? That was a 696 crit. Yeah, 24 at, minutes at in. 24 minutes. S seems good. Artemis, just Artemis things. Exactly. And that, there's a reason that she hasn't been picked as much as of late. It's, it really is with thorns being so prevalent. They're destroying uh, this. People don't really want to and accidentally crit for 600 against a warrior. The, the fire giant goes down in about 30 seconds, though. That crit build really working out for Sops up against the objectives. Osan's getting bursted down. Sops going to get stunned out by Glavis, but Sheka unrelenting again into the back, going up onto the tree. Sops picks up Glavis under the tier two. Sheka looking for Osan, waiting out the Geb shield to drop down, but he's going to like to go on to Y try while Sops get the double on to Puckham. No one there to peel for Puckham. Sheka going to win the 1v3 and pick up Y try who still had his Aegis available. Just wasn't expecting the burst damage out of the tanky Ratatosker. He was zoned three members out while the rest of his team was able to pick up two members. They got the Fire Giant. Now they're going to be getting this right side Phoenix Shaka again on to Osath. Ooh. Final judgment. That chunked through the Geb shield. Osath has his ultimate. Doesn't need it, though. Decides to just back up. Outlaw's in the zone right now, man. He has been 
he's, on point with these final judgments, set up or not. He's been great so far this game. He is dialed in. He's got your number. He's got your home address. He knows where you're coming from. He's going to make sure to drop you down. Level 19, almost at that level 20 threshold. He's got the Rod of Tahuti online, looking for the Chronos pin and get that CDR, get that extra power. Love it. And just trying to get more final judgments off, trying to be able to be more aggressive with that evade and punish because you'll get it up more often. And Sops, by the way, we were talking about how big those crits are. He hasn't even finished Deathbringer yet. He just now oh. back to base and finished that off. So those 696 crits turn into 900, 900 crits. Yeah, it's pretty scary stuff. When was the last time that we really saw these Artemises come out and do obnoxiously destructive things like this? Well, Panda Cat's always the one that I think wow. of when I think of Artemis, and it's usually a, a pa paired alongside a Blink. Sops has gone for a much more traditional route in the Relics with the, with the Aegis and the Beads. But, I mean, I, I really do think that Thorns and Hide of the Nemean Lion being very strong right now have lended themselves to keeping Artemis out of the meta. But... Osath has neglected to go for an, for one of those. Uh, well, he went for the Thorns, but no hide of the Nemean Lion. He really needs it. I would have much rather seen him pick up that physical defense item than the Mystical Mail. Look, Mystical Mail is one of those like, well, we're farming for a little bit longer, and right. I don't need to do anything, so I'll just grab this item and be impactful. The problem was that they were fighting at that point, and, and he really did need some more defense oh. than he had. Wow. Sops getting the beads. You can see him jump for joy. He's loving that. Getting a beads for free on a Ratcheteer, that is a big win. Just stopping the, the back end and trying to get it. Now Ratcheteer knew that he had to use the blink, and that blink engage being down for Terran County is a big deal because blink cataclysm into Supernova is one of the few ways that Outlaw or Sops needs to be worried about the damage coming out of the back line from Tarrant County. Otherwise, Indiana's front line has just done a good, such a good job of pushing the back line of Tarrant back that they haven't even seen him yet. Not only that, the secondary blink that can come out of Glavis to jump in and get the walls going off. Speaking of the walls, goes on to Outlaw. He's going to get the shell. He's going to use his Aegis and his beats to get out. Glavis is the one getting chunked down. He's getting low. Otsa jumps over the top, but Ooh. final judgment again. Sops picks up two with the in hands. The Phoenix going to fall. That's all three birds down. Only two members left to defend this Titan. Make that maybe only one as Pockham is getting chunked down. Does get into the fountain. Sops going to find him anyway. Sops looking for one more as the rest of his team is just picking Give up the four. Titan. An easy win for Indiana. And it was Outlaw on the Thoth. It was it was Sheka on the Ratatosker. Sops on the Artemis. I mean, what do you try and take away? There's so many things to take away at this point. You could pick the Ratatosker away from him. You can ban the Thoth away, but when you're banning an Artemis, that that's a sign. That doesn't feel good. You no. never you never want to ban Artemis. And, it, and there's look, there's no way Terran County bans Artemis in the first two first two bans. No. Maybe in the second banning phase, but even then you're leaving up gods like Hachiman, like Jing Wei, you know, there's these gods that have that have been really impactful so far. They banned Hu Yi in the second phase. If they switch that out, that means Sops gets Hu Yi. If he's doing that on Artemis, what's he gonna do on the gods that uh, other people are playing? Maybe not as much. Maybe that's the pick that Sops is really comfortable with right now, but he's certainly looking great right now. I mean, there's too many hunters out there. Almost every yeah. single hunter at this point is a relevant pick, and especially for Sops. I mentioned his god pool is the hunter god pool. If he can get any hunter on the board, he's happy. Doesn't matter who he's going up against. He could pick the Uller if he wanted to. He can go with the Hoagie. And you can see the team fight by the Gold Fury. The two man boar, the knockup from Sheka that didn't actually connect, but Outlaw able to get that pick up onto it. It stops on the double. And again, and just no, it, Glavis had to go for oh, the, the blink slows. early on, and he got Shell, I believe at level one. So by not going for uh, for something like a Thorin, Sops is able to just crit him oh. down no matter what, finding the invisible in hand on the puck of there. That was a really nice play. Sops, uh, when you play Artemis, all you have to be worried about is warriors doing more damage to you than you're doing to them with your crits, with Thorns and the height of the Nemean Lion. But when no one picks up Nemean and only one of them picks up Thorns and he's level 16 at the yeah, end of the game, no worry. There's, no, there's no concern and Artemis just gets, gets to do whatever she wants. Especially when you're ahead. When you're yeah. worrying about a warrior behind, I mean, you don't have to as an Artemis. You can just chunk them down, especially with the amount of penetration you have in there, the attack speed. You just don't really care about it. And the Poison Star, you saw it in that fight against Glavis. That came in big. Glavis couldn't move. He yeah. was moving so slow. And that's, I mean, with three crit items plus Artemis passive, you're basically like 100% with crit Essentially. You're, you're above 80, basically. And, and then at that point, you're just, you're getting mad if you don't get a crit. Now, most people get mad if they don't get a crit when they've got like 20%. But it, Look, you really should be expecting it out of stops there. Look, I built 0% crit and I didn't get a crit. I'm upset. That's messed up, man. I'm upset. Come on, fix your game. All right, my bad. I'll do that. All right. But one thing going into the Hunters onto that one, Puckham, he did get one of his signature gods. He got the Izanami, but he went for something a little bit 
different in his build. Yeah, I mean, it, he went with the early Titans Bane rush that it, we've seen a couple hunters go for. And look, it, it's not a bad thing. I think that it can work out, but Puckham just never got a chance to get off the no. ground. Shaka and Sops just put a lot of pressure on that side of the map with Sops getting multiple gold theories. Artemis from ahead feels really oppressive, and it's very difficult to try and fight into her, even as something with as much pressure as Izanami. Puckham's got to take that fight level seven, you know, way, way before we're looking at gold theories for the other side. No, I mean, Artemis is suppressive. It's one of her abilities, mm, suppress the insulin. Yeah, that's the three. Yep, that was good. I appreciate yeah, that. That, that, was, that was solid. But uh, we're going to go to a quick little break before we get set up for game number two. Indiana, they're up. Up 1-0 on Tarrant County. It's a best of five set. We got at least two more games going through for these guys.